This is a shaking LED dice kit. I recently received this as a gift from my brother. So let's take a look inside and see what I got. So here's the main PCB. It's double sided and it's a nice red coloration. In addition to the PCB, we have a single resistor, just one this time. And so that looks like it's a brown, black, 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 and with a brown tolerance band, which would give us 100 ohms. We also have a piece of plastic here, which is part of a case, along with some mounting fixtures here, these bolts and nuts. This is a tiny vibration motor, which could allow the device to vibrate. And this component that looks like an electrolytic capacitor is actually a tilt switch. If I shake it around, maybe you can hear the ball bearing inside. Here we also have a three pin device that looks to be a small transistor. We have a switch for power. We have a number of LEDs, and this kit is supposed to be a green kit, but we'll check that shortly. And then we have this eight pin chip, and this is actually a microcontroller. So this actually runs some code. This particular one is an STC8G series of chip. And I believe this one is the 1K17A variant, which means it has approximately 1K of RAM and 17 kilobytes of flash memory. This also means that if this chip doesn't work correctly, we're gonna have big problems with making this project work. It won't be easily replaceable because the chip will have code programmed onto it. Notably, the kit doesn't come with a socket. And due to the importance of that chip, I've grabbed a small eight pin socket from my collection, which I'm going to use to install the chip. The last thing I didn't mention is there is a small battery holder for the battery, which is just here. You'll notice that the battery holder is larger than usual, and that's because this kit requires two CR2032 batteries to be stacked on top of each other. So now we know what we've got in the kit, let's go ahead and assemble it. I'm gonna go ahead and start with a resistor, and there is only one resistor position on the board, that's just here, so I'm just gonna pop that in place. So next, let's install the transistor that's just here, and we just follow the silk screen outline. Okay, next I'm gonna do the socket here, just so that we've got this out of the way before we put the LEDs in. And so here we have the socket, and I'm just going to line up the small dimple cutout that we have here with the cutout indicated on the board. And despite what I just said there, I actually managed to put this around the wrong way. So let's go ahead and see if we can remove it. So that was rather awkward, but better than installing the chip around the wrong way. Let's try that again. So I'm actually gonna be able to reuse this socket, I think. And so we're double checking this time, we can see that the cutout is actually the right way around. Okay, so I think we can now do those LEDs that I promised earlier. So we can check the polarity with a CR2032 battery, as you can hopefully see, this is the positive side, and the longer lead is usually positive, and we do indeed have green LEDs. So let's stick these LEDs in. So here it's important that we did this LED first because the battery holder needs to be soldered on top of that position. Next, let's do our tilt switch. And the switch is bi-directional. It doesn't really matter which way around it goes. So we're just gonna pop it in here. And we have the battery holder. Then let's do the switch. And finally, we have this little tiny vibration motor, and this has some surface mount pads, and they are marked positive and negative, and so we're gonna assume the red is positive. 
Now, I could try and trim these leads down, but they are very fine and I'd rather not damage them. So I think what I'm going to do is maybe just loop them behind this here, maybe, just to keep them out of the way. So on the back of the motor, there is a little tab so we can stick the motor down. So let's take that off. And now we know roughly what orientation we're going to put the motor in, like so. And then just maneuver these wires into place. So let's just tin these pads with some extra solder. Okay, so our motor is now in place. So it seems like we have one extra LED. We just need to install the chip in our socket now that our socket is around the right way. Of course, we could have left it around the wrong way. What I'm going to do here is just bend these little legs in just a little bit to make them a bit more square. And then very carefully, we're going to make sure we get this in the right way around as well, because that would be problematic if we got it the wrong way around. There we go, that's slotted right in, no problem. So it's currently off, I've just made sure it's set to off, and we need two of these batteries, and the plus side goes up. So I've got two here. And then we can turn this on and see if it works. And there you go. So face down and it does the little buzzing effect with the flashing and you turn it out the right way and it gives you a number. Ah, so there you go. Okay, so the last thing to do then is to install the case for it. So if we just make sure we've peeled off any covering plastic here. And then we can install this cover which goes on this side here, just to cover the electronics. So it seems this kit doesn't actually include enough nuts to provide proper standoff positions, but it is more or less being held up by the um, tilt switch just here. So that seems to be okay. I think I might actually see if I can find some more nuts just to guarantee this standoff position, because as you can see, it's a bit, bit wibbly wobbly. But nonetheless, let's turn it back on again and see how it works. So as you can see, this is now showing a three. And if I turn it upside down, it's doing a random flashing pattern. If I turn it back up, now I've got a five. And as you saw, there's a little bit of vibration. You can see it slowly turning itself round on the mat due to the vibration. And I can flip it over, and this time we've got five again. And three. So this doesn't actually seem that random. Of course, random numbers can be deceptive, but maybe this would be interesting to do an analysis to see how random these actually are. Okay, so I think this is a neat little project. I think it could probably do with including a socket just to ensure that you don't accidentally solder the chip around the wrong way, as I almost did. Maybe it would also be nice to include the extra nuts, as I suggested, so that it would be easier to ensure this is offset correctly. And maybe it might even be nice if there was a front cover as well. But nonetheless, this is a really interesting little kit, and I'm pretty pleased that it is working, as it's based off that microcontroller, which would have been really problematic if the controller had been faulty. So I hope you found this video about the shaking dice kit interesting, and I hope to speak to you again soon in the next video.